original Temple Mount was a square. Herod expanded the Temple Mount to make it a much larger rectangle. We'll discuss that as we continually walk around the Temple Mount. The Mishnah tells us that there were one entrance on the west. There's only one entrance to the west. However, we can see already four entrances that Herod built. The first one is this little archway that's sticking out, Robinson's Arch. The second one is we're going to enter onto the Temple Mount right over there, known as Barclays Gate. The third is where we're going to exit the Temple Mount on the chain gate. And the fourth is found inside the Western World Tunnel Tours. Uh, there's a doorway that they say is opposite the Holy Holies. That's the fourth doorway. That would be this one over here. Okay? That's on the evangelical stone that's double the height of a regular standard Kotel stone and a bunch of smaller stones underneath it. That is Barclays Gate. Again, further telling us that the western wall was just an entranceway into the temple itself. Over here, we see an entire sort of like a uh, pillar park of a bunch of uh, bases of, of pillars and the tops of the, the the pillars itself. All that we're missing is the actual pillars themselves. Now, if you come up close to them, which we don't have time to do right now, you'll see there are red streaks. If you go up close, you'll see that there's still gold that once covered those pillars, still still covering the pillars itself. There are like a few little pieces there. Out to, um, he expanded the, the roughly from right around here all the way to the south. All the rest of this area was Herodian expansion. On its place, he built uh, a building known in English as the portico, um, in Latin as the basilica, and in Hebrew as the itztaba. And that area was no was basically used for Sorry. most no problem was used for mostly of the temple functions. So what was looking upwards towards the dome of the rock? And over here we see staircases going down. Okay, we see stairs going underneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque. There's another staircase over there that we're going to see as well. Why is that significant? Um, well, as we mentioned, one of the longest standing traditions is that the Dome of the Rock is the location of the Holy of Holies. But what else do we know about the Holy of Holies? We know that it was built on the peak of the mountain. So here I have my mountain. We'll use my keep up for the analogy. And at the peak, I need to build the, the Kodesh HaKadashim, right? But I have a problem. I have a slope. How am I going to build a building? It's a very large building I need to build. So what do I do? I can either smash the mountain down and now have what's known as the Plains of Moriah. It sort of defeats the whole purpose. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build retaining walls around the mountain and have a flat platform, which is why when you're standing here, all you're seeing is a platform. You don't see the Mount of Moriah, even though we're standing on Har Moriah today. Now, if you look right over there and follow this walkway up to the stairs there, right to the right of the stairs, a little bit of a rock outcropping that's sticking out of the platform. That is, in fact, bedrock of Mount Moriah. When we have a platform, there are certain parts of the platform that will be just a few inches above the, the bedrock, and there are certain parts that could be a few hundred feet between the bedrock and the uh, and the mountain. Staircase leading down into the entrance of the Al Alawiyah Mosque. This area it was actually illegally excavated in 1996, where they um, where they dug out. They brought in heavy machinery and dug out this whole area. And made and, and cleared out this area for this mosque. Now, in contrast, there's an elevator that's being built right now next to the Kotel, and it's taking them over seven years to build. Why? Because by law, is if you want to dig or build anything in a protected area, a historical area, you first need to do an archaeological dig. However, the people here didn't don't really care, and they just dug it all up and they this dumped everything. All, it's all the dirt that they brought. Down exactly. The they, in the in the Amitsurim, the national national park in the Kidron Valley. There's a bunch the of right in front of you. Yes, well, there's the rest of the piles that they didn't manage to get off is right over there, as, as you uh, wonderfully said. Thank you. Now, um, what that further demonstrates to us is that they didn't have to dig into any bedrock to, to, to go underneath here. They just dug through what once was just areas of storage rooms. Again, further showcasing that the bedrock of the mountain, the height, the peak of the mountain is over there and not over here. Now, when Herod expanded the Temple Mount, he expanded it to the south, to the north, and to the west, but not to the east. Why was that? Well, as we come down the staircase here and we look through the window, we can see how steep the Kidron Valley was. And we can understand for practical reasons why the Temple Mount was never expanded to the east. It just wasn't practical. I would have to build a much deeper retaining wall 
to, to hold up and much stronger retaining wall to hold up the, the mountain tops. Take a look now, right from where we are. Look through the window and see how steep it is. Ours 18, right? Ours 18 is right underneath, and we're not that's not even the bottom of the mountain, this goes much lower. We're now able to appreciate things that we wouldn't have if we, when we look at any other wall because the base of this wall is still go, dates back to the original first temple period. All other walls have been covered over. We can't have any any uh, knowledge about them unless we were able to do archaeological digs, which based on the current political climate, we cannot. This wall, if you go down to the base of it, not over here, these are all stones. If you go to the base of it, you'll actually see some stones that date back to the times of Solomon, which is a, an actual a very big deal for us. Over here, as we walk alongside the east, we're able to further appreciate how much higher the Dome of the Rock is above us. We're always looking upward to the Dome of the Rock. Again, further cementing this this idea. And over here, these big mounds of dirt and rubble were all the a rubble that was not actually dumped in the Kidron Valley before the, the national outcry grew such that they had to leave it here. But again, you see how, how dirty and, you know, full of the rubble this area is. Much farther to go in terms of truly giving, uh, having this place as a place of prayer for all, as Yeshayahu, as Isaiah says, Ki beti bit Yikarei my house should be a house of prayer for all nations, for all people. And we hope to, to can only work towards till we get that here. We're about to daven mincha, a two very important things. On one daven's mincha and on Harabait, they add an additional pasuk. Baruch Hashem Elokei If anybody wants to wants a direct uh, siddur, you can go to uh, open up your browser. It's the Har H A R dash H A B A I T dot M E, and you can have the exact lashon there. Also, when we answer instead of answering Amen to Chazarat Hashanah, we say Baruch Hashem Kibbol Nachukol Leilam. Arabic. It says in Arabic, Beit Alamaktis, Alms and Zakal Committee. You can read the English. Also, I'll explain as we walk what that means. Also, take a look over here. You see some carpets and tarps. Underneath those tarps are cedar woods that have been carbon dated to the 9th century BCE, which places it at the beginning of the first temple period. Those are the famed Isaiah Lebanon, the cedars of Lebanon that were brought by King Hiram, King uh, uh, of the King. The, uh, under, under there, under the tarps over there, there are cedars of Lebanon that have been carbon dated to the 9th century BCE, which places them as the famed cedars of Lebanon sent by King Hiram to Shlomo Amal to King Solomon to build the first Beit HaMikdash. They were found after an earthquake in 1921 in the Al -Aqsa, in the basement of Al-Aqsa. They were brought outside. They were just sitting here under the elements. Uh, Israeli scientists and archaeologists in 1967 took a piece off it carbon dated with carbon-14 and places it around that site. Now, back to the sign of Beit al -Maktis. What does Beit al -Maktis mean? In Arabic, the prefix al is the same as the prefix ha in, in Hebrew or the English the. Maktis is mikdash, Beit is house. So, if you're look, if you're asking Arab to translate Beit al maktis into Hebrew, it would be into Beit HaMikdash. Now, this is very significant. The people have this idea that the Dome of the Rock is sort of like a, a superstition of, of uh, Islam over Judaism. That is not, in fact, correct. For most of our history, the, the, the view of the Dome of the Rock was actually put there as a placeholder over the Holy of Holies. It was, it was if you look through, Rabbi Ariel of the Machon Mikdash has an entire book dedicated showing how the Dome of the Rock was, in fact, looked at as a, in, as a way of the building of the Beit HaMikdash, the building of the Hechal. And it's there, it's an important site because it holds over the site of where the third temple will once will Hashem be built. Also, when Radvaz, Rabbi Dovin Ibn Zimra, the rabbi of Cairo, chief rabbi of Cairo, also the rabbi of the Arizal and Rabbi Yosef Cairo, when he came in, in 1516, he wrote a chuva, he wrote a responsa where one is allowed to enter into the Temple Mount. And what is the question? Uh, those that want to enter into the Beit HaMikdash, where can they go? Beit HaMikdash? What Beit HaMikdash? There's no Beit HaMikdash in those days. Well, he's referring to the Arabic name of the site, Beit al Maktis, which is referring to the site as Beit HaMikdash. It was, the other name, Haram al Shirk, only came into play after 1936 when they started to whitewash the connection to the Beit HaMikdash. I'll interrupt this thought for just to point out this is the gate of the tribe. The paratroopers in 1967 broke it through here. The original, the original Temple Mount was a square. The original Beit HaMikdash built by Shlomo Amalekh was a square. As it says in the Mishnah, when the Beit HaMikdash was not centered on the, on the, in the square because of two reasons. Number one, the first thing that was important was, as we know, the Kodesh HaKadashim, the Holy of Holies, had to be built on the peak of the mountain. So Shlomo Melch was limited to the topography of the mountain. The second reason why it wasn't centered was because exactly that. 
the mountain of, of Paramoria slopes has a general gradual incline from the Shiloh pool up to the peak of the mountain with the city of David in the middle, right? But once it gets to the peak, it sort of drops off a cliff. All of this area here before the Herodian expansion was a valley. And like on the north, like on the eastern side, it was not practical for the Beit HaMikdash to be built into the Kidron Valley because it would be too hard and too difficult. And they built the platform based on the layout of the, of the, of the topography. So too on the north. Now, the Beit HaMikdash had to, was not centered even, um, even east to west because the Beit HaMikdash had to face um, Cardinal East. Whereas the, the Temple Mount was sort of limited to the topography of the layout of the mountain. So that's why you have the reality of the original Beit HaMikdash not being centered. But Herod, who built, who expanded the Temple Mount over 750 years after the building of Solomon, and also with a lot more slave labor at his exposure, decided that the Beit HaMikdash being in the center was the most important thing. And therefore in, a, a expanded the Temple Mount much more to the north so that the Beit HaMikdash would now be centered Original west, uh, the original walls of the Temple Mount. He just put an additional retaining wall and filled it up to the original retaining wall. That means, in theory, we should be able to see certain parts of the wall sticking up through the ground, or at least as part of the, the pavement. Do we have any such places on the Temple Mount? In fact, we actually do. That staircase where that young man is walking up, at the bottom of that stairs, we can't really see from where we are now, but as soon as we pass this little, this little elevated thing, we'll be able to see it was the top of the original western wall. So as soon as we pass this right area right here, right now we can see. Take a look at the bottom, the base stair of this of this staircase. See how it's different? That's actually the top of the original Solomon wall of the first Beit HaMikdash and again the second Beit HaMikdash. So until Herod expanded it, you can see the bottom step of that staircase. That is the original Western wall. Quick say a pasuk of Tehillim and then you can say you dive at the original Western wall. Yeah. Now, does anybody have by any chance a one shekel coin on them? I know my tour is very expensive. <laughs> while we won't, while we won't care. You guys stay with the, the group. Yeah. You have a one shekel, I need specifically a one shekel. Perfect, we have a one shekel coin. Take a look at the flower at the back of this one shekel coin. This is known as the fleur de lis. Yes. Okay, also the wording over here is uh, words in the Hebrew script, Yahud, Yud Hei Dalet. Okay, the original, when the Jews returned to the second temple period, they were not autonomous. They were actually a province or a state under the, Jew, uh, under the Persian government. And their symbol was this flower. Exactly. Take a look at this stone right here. This stone right here, if you look, you can see the flower. And it's the floor of the it's on all sides. This was a pillar head from the original second temple period. Now, it was moved because imagine the original second temple ended over there. It was later moved and now it's just sitting here as a, as a step onto that platform. But that's what it signifies. That's like finding Bezat Hashem, a, an Israeli flag, 4,000 years from now. Over here, we have the graves of Abdullah, king of Jordan, and another crypt which has seven, six gra uh, graves of, of some of our worst enemies including Abdul Khadr al-Husseini, uh, who led the insurrection against the Jews in 1947, before he was killed at Castel. Um, he is buried here in the very Western world, the very Kotel Amaravi, that all the Jews pray at, further showcasing that if we don't take care of our holy sites, we can't expect our enemies to do so. Right, that's why Rambam writes, Le'yakel Rosho Keneget Shah HaMizra, because that was the area where people pray with most respect. Today, where do most Jews pray at? The Western wall, they're facing the back. When the Beit HaMikdash stood, there was no doorway here. Ironically, God placed the door in the Dome of the Rock here. So maybe it's still going to hide something like this. Sometimes you got to use the back door to get close. Interesting. If you look over here, there are two different types of stone. I'm going to do this, don't do this, now we'll make a police, uh, a police angry. Over here, you have limestone. And you could, if you can bend down where you are, you can feel the limestone. This is marble. It feels very different. Now, today, it feels the same in terms of of temperature, but in the summer, the limestone is boiling hot and the marble is cool to the touch. Why is that significant? In the temple itself, in the Azara itself, one had to be barefoot. Now, the floor of the Azara was covered in marble. It wasn't just for beautiful purposes. In the summer, you burn your feet if you had to work on, walk on marble, on, on a limestone. The marble, for some reason, does not retain heat. It stays cool to the touch. Um, I invite you guys all back in August 
or you can experience that yourself. Right? Because your prayers were answered over here and therefore you received help from heaven. That's what it's called as the Azarah. This area is known as the Azarah. The first gate of Robinson's Arch, we saw Barclay's Gate. We're about to exit the chain gate which was the main thoroughfare for the aristocracy and those who lived in the upper western city of Jerusalem. Most Jews that lived in Jerusalem in the times of the Beit HaMikdash lived in the south and by the, by the city of David. But there were the aristocracy, the Kohanim, the Tzidukim, but I repeat myself, all lived in the west. And instead of them having to walk all the way down the Tyropian Valley and then back up to the Beit HaMikdash, Herod built a beautiful bridge. The bridge exits out through this gateway. And this is one of the, was one of the main 